Today I want to show you how to write a Boolean equation from a digital circuit. Um, so I wrote out an example um, of a digital logic gate array and um, it has inputs A, B, C, and D and output F. So I want to show you how we would write the equation for this. Um, to, to do this I'm going to start on the left hand side and I'm going to work my way towards the right and um, I'm just going to start with this first gate here. So here this is an AND gate. I have A and B ANDed together. A ANDed with B. That result is getting ORed with C. So we have OR C. Then that result of this OR is getting inverted. So I'll put an inverter symbol there. And then that result is getting ANDed with D. And then that result is getting ANDed with something else. So um, this something else we're going to have to figure out from coming back here. So in here we have A and B are ANDed together. That result is ORed with C. That result is ORed with D. And then that result is what goes into the AND gate with what we have derived from up above here. And so this is what gives us our function f. Now um, we're probably going to be asked to use Boolean algebra to simplify this long expression into something um, less complicated. So let's do that. Let me rewrite this. So I'm going to simplify using Boolean algebra. So I have that f can be written as um, we have a and b bored with c and then that gets knotted. I'm going to change to this complement notation because I just like it better. You can do it whichever way you like. And that's anded with d and then d is anded with a and b or c and that result is ORed with D. Okay, so um, I've rewritten this thing here a little bit more succinctly. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with um, this using Boolean, al Boolean algebra. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply De Morgan's to this term right here. So everything that's inside of here, I'm going to distribute this negative to all these terms and I'm going to change this OR to an AND. So be careful here because um, when I distribute this negative into here, it's distributing to this entire multiplicative term, not to the A and B individually. We'd have to apply De Morgan's again to that. So that gets its own NOT. We change this OR to an AND, and then the C gets its own NOT. So this is the result of applying De Morgan's to this. And everything else I'm just going to write out C or D and over here my justification is by De Morgan's theorem. Okay great and now um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to apply De Morgan's to this thing here. Now this if I apply De Morgan's I'm going to distribute this complement into both of these terms and I'm going to change this and to an or. So this becomes A naught or B naught. And then this is still getting ANDed with C naught. And then I still have this stuff here. D and A, B, or C or with D. And this is De Morgan's theorem again. Okay, great. Now what I'd like to do is um, here we have some parentheses. We made these parentheses because um, there was a result of an ANDing that was later ORed with C, right? But um, since this gets ORed with D, we have associativity of ORing, so we actually don't need all of these parentheses. So I could just write this all as one expression. So this is going to give me a naught or B naught ANDed with C naught and that results ANDed with D and D is ANDed with A, B, or C, or D. And this is by associativity 
of the ORing function. Okay, great. So then um, I have this term ended with this term, ended with this, ended with this. So actually, by associativity of the AND function, I don't need these brackets either. So I'll write this as A naught or B naught, um, anded with C naught, anded with D, anded with A, B, or C, or D. Okay, great. So then um, at this point, I would like to, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these C and D's into this um, set of parentheses, right? So I'm going to apply distribution to just multiply by A, B, multiply by C, multiply by D, and then add all of them together. Okay, so let me write this. This was associativity of AND. And then my next step is going to be distribution. So this part stays the same and I get C naught D anded with A B or C naught D anded with C or C naught D anded with D. And this is distribution. Okay, so I'm going to continue on applying my theorems and postulates of Boolean algebra. So this thing I'm going to leave alone for now. But inside here, I'm going to be able to do some simplification. So let me just write these terms so you can clearly see what, um, and put some stuff next to each other. I can do that because of commutativity of anding. So this is C naught anded with C, or C naught and D anded together. Um, so I just made this step because of commutativity of the AND function. And then you can see I have a C not anded with C. And anytime we have C not anded with C, anything not anded with itself, this result's always going to be zero because one of them has to be zero. And if we and anything with zero, that's equal to zero. So this I can rewrite as a naught or B naught anded with C naught D A B or D anded with zero or C naught D D. And the reason why I did that, I'll say, is since X naught X is equal to zero for all X. Okay, great. So then the next thing is I see I have a D anded with itself. So D anded with itself is just going to be 1D, so I can simplify that. A naught or B naught anded with C naught D A B um, or D anded with 0 or C naught times D. And this is, I'll say, since D anded with D is equal to D. And then the other simplification that I get to do is right here, anytime we and something with zero, the result is going to be zero. So that means I can just get rid of that term altogether. A naught or B naught times the quantity C naught D A B or zero or C naught D. And the reason for that is since anything ended with zero is equal to zero for all x. Okay, great. So then I have, well, I'm just writing out all the steps here because when we're learning, it's nice to have them explicitly written out. We have this. Okay, great. So then um, I can multiply this by this. So we have um, two terms separated by an or, these two multiplicative terms separated by an or. So when I multiply these, I can just basically FOIL them, but it's called distribution. Um, so this is going to be, I'll say, since anything or zero is just equal to anything for all x. And this next step is going to be, when I multiply these out, all of my first terms multiplied together, A naught, C naught, D, A, B. I'll have my outside terms multiplied together, or A naught, C naught, D. I'll have my inside terms multiplied together, 
or B naught, C naught, D, A, B, and then I'll have my last terms multiplied together, or B naught, C naught, D. And the justification for this is distribution, and in parentheses I'll just say FOIL, because that's what I did. Okay, great, so now we get to make some more simplifications. I will write some terms next to each other so you recognize that we can simplify them. This is C naught D B times A naught A. So we're gonna be able to do something nice with that. Here we have A naught C naught D. Over here we have a C naught D A and then we have a B naught B. So there we're going to be able to simplify that. And then we have a B naught C naught D. Okay, great. So we have that this thing is equal to zero and this thing is equal to zero by the same justification up here. So I'll say since anything anded with its complement is equal to zero for any x, this is going to be C naught D B anded with zero or this term stays, or C naught D A anded with zero, or, then that term's still there. Okay, great. Now all these terms that are um, getting anded with zero, this whole thing is gonna be zero. So let's say this is zero, or A naught C naught D, or B naught C naught D, since if we and anything with zero, we get zero for all x. Great, and then um, what do we have here? This term has a C naught D and this term has a C naught D, so I can factor that out. C naught D times A naught or B naught. And then um, if I want to go a little bit farther, I can actually apply De Morgan's to this one. So this is going to give us C naught D times if I pull a negative out of it, it's gonna change this or to an and. So this'll be A and B, and there's my negative. So now um, I have, this is gonna to correspond to the gate array where A and B get anded and then inverted, and then that result is going to be anded with C inverted and D. Okay, so I now have this more simplified gate array that implements the same logic as our original one that's uh, much bigger and more complicated, and the way we found that was through all these steps of Boolean algebra. So there's our final function where this implements the same logic as our original f. So let me know if you have any questions about that.